Howdy folks, this is Bell Geode, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator, and this is a test, otherwise known as one of my chill vids. So first off, happy February to you all. I realize it's been a little bit of a while since I've posted a video. I'm trying not to do them like every single week, so there may be like a week or two in between videos, because there's a lot going on uh, real world. Um, so. I'm finding that even though I do technically have more free time, that free time's usually taken up doing other non-flight sim and gaming related stuff. So apologies if there's a little bit of a delay, but hey, it gives more time for people to actually find the video and YouTube to do its little algorithm thing and, you know, you know how it works. I don't need to explain it. You know how it all works. By the way, be sure to like the video. That way it pops up, you know, on people's algorithms. Yeah. So anyway, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. And we are currently using uh, World Update 16, which is one that is near and dear to my heart because it is the world update that uh, has improved many places in the Caribbean. So for those of you who are new to the channel, uh, Jamaica has a very, very deep history for me. And this is where we are today. We're actually in Montego Bay in World Update 16's version of Donald Sangster International Airport. Of course, the little thing will be popping up right about now down there. So you can see the ICAO code and all that good jazz. And they've also included some POIs around the Montego Bay area. So we're going to be checking those out. And we're just basically going to fly around the area. What I might do is I might do the next few videos here in Jamaica. So that way I can show you all the POIs, but we'll have to do it in sections because especially if we're using a helicopter such as this one here, which I'll get to in a second, it's going to take us a while to fly around the island, isn't it? It doesn't go very fast really doesn't. Speaking of the helicopter, what you're looking at right here is a classic. This is the Innybuilds rendition of the Bell 47J or Juliet model. Now this particular livery also has some significance and kind of ties in with why this helicopter was chosen to be the local legend for this particular update. So the livery that you're looking at is very close to the same livery that was used in the 1960s James Bond movie, Thunderball. And Thunderball was filmed mostly in the Bahamas. So that's why this helicopter is considered a local legend for the Caribbean. Now, of course, we're in Jamaica because, like I said, Jamaica is very special to me. And that also has a tie in to James Bond because over in the Ocho Rios area, there is an airport there that used to be called Bosco Bell, but is now called Ian Fleming International Airport. And Ian Fleming, of course, is the author of James Bond stories. So there you go. It's all connected. It's all connected. Yay. All right, but yeah, we're going to be uh, flying around the Montego Bay area. We will visit uh, Ocho Rios and that neck of the woods in a later video. I may also feature some freeware that um, some people have done for Jamaica, just to see how that ties into what Microsoft and Asobo have done for this particular world update. But we'll cross that bridge another time. For now, let's take a look at this helicopter. So, needless to say, the Bell 47 has a very storied history. Most people will remember it from, like, MASH and so on and so forth. And, of course, it didn't have all of the coverings and everything on there. This particular version was designed to be a little bit bigger than the version that was featured in MASH. So you'll notice that we've got, like, little passenger seats in the back there. We've got uh, double doors and all that good jazz. We even got a little fan. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Got a little fan right there. I love it. And you can see we got these big, huge, humongous, massive floats on the bottom here. So if we ever decide to do any water landings or if we have to auto-rotate and ditch, well, we might actually survive. Maybe. Or maybe we can fly to the Bahamas and, like, go searching for any uh, underwater Avro Vulcans. Again, that's a James Bond reference there, in case you were curious. 
All right, but any build seems to have done a really good job on this. Now, I don't recall any builds ever doing helicopters before, but look at the detail that they've put into, like, the rotor, the swash plate, even the little stabilization bar that the uh, 47J was famous for, which actually does make this helicopter a relatively stable bird to fly. I know some people have taken to calling it too stable online, but... Uh, from my understanding, that is actually in line with uh, what this helicopter was supposed to be. That's exactly why they installed that thing, was to help you uh, fly this thing straight. And of course, you know I'm going to put her through her paces, so we will find out exactly how good she is. But like, look at the tail rotor here. Tell me that's not awesome. Got a little chain there, almost looks like a bicycle chain, doesn't it? That's so cool. That's so cool. So any builds, once again, knocking it out of the park with their models. Really, really good stuff here. And let's go to the uh, external static cams. Uh, there's not going to be too, too much to show. You know I like to mess around with the external static cams, but uh, for any builds, eh, we'll let them slide this time. So let's take a look at what we got. All right, so the first view behind the helicopter, um, the only thing I don't like is the fact that it's at an angle. I realize it's probably to show you the uh, transmission shaft here, but um, whenever I do these VR videos, since this view is fixed, granted, I can move my head around, but it's kind of awkward for me to be looking up and to the right just to be able to see forward. But you know what? I'm not going to crucify them on that because I kind of understand why developers like to do this. I would just like to point out to developers that when you're doing these external static cameras, I don't know how many other people use them the way that I do. I use them basically for cinematic purposes, but that's part of the reason why I keep things facing forward like this. I can still see the aircraft. All I have to do is just move my head. Literally, I'm in VR. But, um, yeah, I kind of like it to be that way, so that way I'm not getting, you know, spatial disorientation. Second view, the Bell Geode landing cam. Of course, you had to have a Bell Geode landing cam. This is what I have taken to calling it. And uh, speaking of which, I know that a number of people have had issues with the uh, changes that I've made to the Cowan Sim helicopters. They're saying, oh, the view is stuck. Um, well, yeah, it's supposed to be. It's an external static camera. Look up the word static. If you're in VR, you can do this. If you're not in VR, use the camera to help you land. That's exactly why I put it in the cameras.cfg. They've asked Cowan to change it. I don't know if he has. I haven't checked any of Cowan's latest uh, works, but uh, just bear in mind, I'm going to be fighting for that one because the Bell Geo landing cam is a very important one, especially for those of us who actually like to fly from the outside cinematically and so on and so forth, and at least check our landing spots before we actually come down on it. So there you go. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Next one. Um, I don't know what went wrong here, any builds, but we're in the ground. I got to like, yeah, I got to do this. I got to sit up in my seat just so I can actually see this. A view like this, of course, I'm not a huge fan of at all. Only because the only reason why you would use a view like this is if you want to take nifty little screenshots while you're on the ground. You're never going to use something like this when you're flying, which is why I typically try to avoid these views. But again, not going to crucify them on this one. Just pointing it out that it may seem like a cool addition, but it's not as cool as you might think. And then, of course, we've got another view here. And pretty much the same thing as the Belgio landing cam, except offset to the right and looking forward and slightly inside this pontoon here. So that's a thing. And back to this. So we'll keep it on that for right now as we go into the cockpit and see if we can start this sucker. Okay, so we are in the office. And the first thing you're going to notice is the offset panel here. That is a strange design decision from Bell. Why they chose to do it that way, I have no idea. Especially when you consider the original 47 had the panel, like, directly in front of you. I guess it's probably to uh, improve visibility. And you do have a lot of visibility in this bird, so it is the perfect sightseeing bird, as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah, I just don't get why they have that 
offset to the left side there. Anyway, you can see that uh, we got space for some passengers in the back. I want to say either two or three passengers. And we got the door. Let me see if I can close it. There we go. All right, looking good. I don't know if we can open the window, so no, it doesn't look like we can. Oh, well. Not a big deal. But yeah, as you can see, it is old school, baby. It is old school. It's got all kinds of goodies here. Now, it does have the little iPad here where you can change settings and so on and so forth. You can punch in your departure, your arrival. And, of course, uh, there's a nifty little map, which kind of functions as a GPS. We do have GPS here, but you also have the option of removing all of that and just having old school radios in there, too. So, whichever way you want to roll it, that's going to be your choice. But, with that having been said, everything does look really, really nice here in VR. All good quality, very sharp weathered where it needs to be that is the kind of stuff that i really respect when developers do so again any bills i can't fault you on that one this is good this is really good just work on them external static cameras huh <laughs> all right let's go ahead and get this puppy started so we are going to want the checklist uh before i do that though let me make sure that Kara is turned off because it's only me in the bird today yep ai radio communications is off okay that is perfect all right checklist moment of truth yes thank you any builds those of you who are regular watchers of the channel know this is something that i fight for often because i need for every single aircraft developer to make sure that we've got full checklists in there it might not seem like it's worth the work but especially for vr users a lot of the times we don't have the option of popping open a pdf and following everything by the books because we've got something on our face that we're currently looking at the in sim world there's a reason why microsoft and Sobo made this use it all right so flight controls check we'll check for movement of the cyclic check for movement of the collective yeah, everything's good. Pedals. We'll do the anti-torque pedals here. That's right, Nova Wing. Anti-torque pedals, not rudder pedals. I'm on to you. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Mixture control should be rich. So we'll go ahead and put that up. Right about there. Carburetor heat should be cold. I want to say the carburetor heat is this one. Oh, that's anti-ice. Well, you know what? Either way, we're going to shove it down here. I don't know if that's exactly where it needs to go, but we can always check with a little eyeball thingy here. Hey! Okay, so apparently that is where we want to be. So we'll keep that there. I don't think it's going to ice over in Jamaica. All right, let's go to engine start. So we want the battery switch on, we want the generator switch on, and we want the fuel switch on. So battery and gen, I have a button for that. So we'll go ahead and hit that. Fuel switch, we're going to go ahead and turn you on. All right, you can see our GPSs are coming to life. This is already alive, so we're good to go there. And we'll just go through the list real quick here. Bam, bam, bam. Throttle, slightly above idle. So your throttle in the helicopter is on the collective. So I know that uh, most of the people who are watching this already have a good idea about helicopters, but for those of you who are new, throttle and collective are two separate things. Your throttle is gonna determine your RPM as you're getting up to the green where your rotors and your engine RPM should be. The governor will keep everything in the green, but other than that, that's the only time that you really use the throttle is for startup and shutdown. You just want to get the throttle from ground idle to flight idle. The collective, however, is what's going to actually allow you to take off and gain altitude and so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. Two separate controls, throttle versus collective. I would get into a more scientific explanation of that, but um, I am not like a certified helicopter pilot instructor or anything like that. If you want more information, you can always check out helisimmer.com. I will put a link to uh, some of the tutorial articles that Helisimmer has. 
All right, so we'll throttle slightly above idle, and if you turn it slightly, you'll see it's rotating clockwise. Actually, I guess that's counterclockwise, isn't it? So yeah, we want it slightly above idle, no problem. The starter, we're going to depress. Now, where exactly is the starter, you ask? Well, you can see we've got a little eyeball here that tells us it is right there. And after we uh, do the starter, we're also going to do the ignition switch. So we're going to set our magnetos to both here. So we're going to do both of those roughly around the same time. Might take me a couple tries. It's an old bird. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the magnetos on from now. Uh, the only thing I don't like a Sobo is the click spots when you're using the mouse in VR are still off. They're still referencing the left eye as opposed to both eyes synchronized. All right, but let's go ahead and start. Okay. Sounds like we got a good start, right? You can see the needle wobble in there. All right. I feel good about that. How about you? Oh, let's get our um, rotor brake off while we're at it. That would probably help immensely. Yeah. Once again, Belgeo, forgetting the rotor brake. You know what it is? The rotor brake I have set to my flaps lever on my Verpal throttle. And typically, if I'm flying aircraft, of course, I want to have the flaps up. So the lever is in the up position. But the problem is with the rotor brake, I need to reverse that because the up position in the rotor brake means that the rotor brake is engaged. So that's on my bad. I'll need to change my settings. All right, so the engine is idling. Oil pressure check at 65 PSI. Uh, I always forget where the oil pressure is. There it is. That's about 65, right? Looks about right to you? It looks about right to me. All right, throttle, we're gonna wanna increase and we're gonna get it to about 1700 to 1800 RPM. So let's go. We're slowly but surely turning the knob. Or I guess technically if you have a physical collective, you would be turning the sleeve for it. But yeah, either way, you can see that the RPM needle is rising. So it's gonna go into the yellow spot there. Go ahead and click that, click that, and click that. Okay, so far everything sounds kosher. The sounds are awesome, by the way. Thank you, Anybills. This really does sound good. All right, let's get the engine RPMs up to 2200. So once again, we're turning the knob, which will turn our sleeve. Now here's where things are gonna get a little bit weird. You'll notice that it goes over the green. So we're gonna wanna have the governor kick in and take care of that. All right, there we go. Oil temperature increase to 3100. We can do the magneto test, but honestly, I usually just pass by the magneto test. And of course, we're going to need to get clearance and do our hover taxi and all of that good jazz. So we'll take care of that in a moment. Here. In the meantime, I am still getting our throttle up to flight idle. You can see it's well over where it should be. But like I said, the governor should be uh, kicking in. That's assuming this particular bird has a governor. You'll notice a little switch there that says gov. So if I click it on, watch the needles. Now they go back to the green. So what the governor will do is it'll make sure that we always stay in the green while we're flying. Because if we get too fast or too slow, we're going to run into problems, shall we say. And I'm also going to kick on the little fan. Look at that. That's so cool. Literally, it's cooling me. Yay. All right, let's get the map on on this thing here, and we'll just leave it as it is. You can see that we're currently facing south, so we're going to need to uh, get clearance to head out. I want to say we're taking off uh, to the west today. I'm going to set this to out already because I'm notorious for forgetting it. 
All right, we're going to wait for this to do its thing here. So it's searching, and searching. But yeah, as you can see, it's a relatively easy process to get this bird started. There's no gotchas, really, for this one. It's real easy. It's an old-school helicopter, so there's not a lot to it. All right, are you doing your thing, or are you just going to, like, chill there for a second? Oh, you're acquiring. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. Well, rock on with your bad self. Hurry up and acquire so I can take off, please. I guess while we're waiting, we should probably get that clearance, huh? Now, I am not using any kind of um, add-on for ATC, just the basic default ATC. Now, some have asked why I do that. I don't have time to mess with ATC. I'm not trying to be on VATSIM or anything like that, and I certainly am not going to try any of the brand new fangled AI ATC things where you can ask them questions and they'll answer a smart aleck answer. I just want to fly. I just want to fly. And especially in a video like this, the idea is to showcase to you the helicopter, the scenery, how everything works in VR, how intuitive or not intuitive it is, depending on you know, what it is that we're showcasing. And that's it. I'm not here to fly it by the books. We're here to have fun. That's kind of the point of flying helicopters. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's also fun. If you're not having fun doing it, then I hate to break it to you, you're doing it wrong. All right, thanks to ground. Um, we would like to take off if you don't mind. Let's see, let's uh, depart straight off. Sangster ground Bell 47 Juliet with Kilo request taxi for takeoff departing straight out. Bell 47 Juliet taxi to an hold short of runway 25. Contact tower on 118.75 when ready. Runway 25, got it. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 25 Bell 47 Juliet. Okay. Now, runway 25 should be off in that direction. That is an awful long distance to taxi. I'm not so sure I'm going to go all the way down there. We might go to, like, one of the uh, turnoffs there. But either way, let's take a quick look outside and see the helicopter in readiness, and then we will head out. Okay, so it is time to get my inner Felix Lighter on. Again, another James Bond reference there. Felix Lighter is like James Bond's best friend. Works for the CIA. You know the story. If you're a Bond fan, you already know. If not, you probably don't even care. All right, let's get the collective up. So remember, we don't need to mess with the throttle anymore. It is good to go. So collective is coming up. We're gonna get ourselves light on the skids here and see which way she wants to go. And we'll start adding a little bit of pedal and cyclic to compensate. Now this one does need a lot of collective in order to come up. Of course, it doesn't help that I've got 60% gas going here. It's a very small helicopter, so. We definitely want to make sure that we're pulling a fair amount of collective on it as we do our hover taxi here. And it does have a tendency to come through its own ground effects, you know, like the rotor downwash here, and park itself back on the ground. So you really got to keep the collective up on this puppy. If I had to give you a percentage, I would say probably about 75-80% collective most times. But thankfully, this is one of those helicopters where you can pull close to about 90% collective and you'll still be pretty good. All right, so we're gonna slightly turn here. And basically all I'm doing is taking out some of the left anti-torque pedal that I've put in. If I keep this pedal uh, completely centered, look at what happens here. You see, we automatically start torquing to the right. So you are gonna need a very little bit of left pedal. And remember, 
my golden rule with helicopters, which I'm pretty sure most uh, helicopter pilots in the real world would agree with me. Fingertip movements, or I guess in this one, toe tip movements. That sounds about right, right? <laughs> All right, so here is the end of the runway as far as we are concerned. I'm gonna pull the collector down a little bit here to make sure that we don't go through effective translational lift. You can see our forward speed is relatively slow. We're still below 20 knots, so we're good. We're good. And I'm going to pull up right up to the hold short here. And we're going to check out Montego Bay. So yeah, like I said, uh, this isn't going to be a full cross-country run or anything like that. We just want to check out uh, what has changed here in Jamaica. And then we'll come back and get into the pattern and land here. All right, so here's our hold short. Uh, we can probably get our landing lights on too, so we can go ahead and do that while we're coming down. Oh, the sim froze when I did that. Asobo, why is that still a thing? That used to happen in like the earlier versions of the sim. And it looks like it's making a comeback whenever you hit the landing lights. It actually freezes the sim as the landing lights come on. But let's verify that they are in fact on. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna get our um, position lights and everything on. So all of that freezy freezy and nothing happened, huh? Let's take a look now and see if it's on. No, it's still not on. Hmm, interesting. I know it's got landing lights. There's a switch right here. Oh, it's probably not hooked up to the verbal controls that I have. All right, I bet it's on now. Wow, it's still not on. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it definitely says my landing lights are on, but okay, I guess we'll have to call maintenance when we come back. In the interim, let's go ahead and contact the tower and let them know we're ready to go. Sangsta Tower, Belgio 70 Alpha Golf Bravo, ready for takeoff. Sangster Tower Bell 47 Juliet at runway 25 ready for departure what I said. starting straight out. Bell 47 Juliet 1263 Straight out departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 25. Alright, and everything was iry once more. Cleared for takeoff runway 25 Bell 47 Juliet. Okay, so Collective is coming up. We're getting ready on that left pedal. And Cyclic is kind of jiggling her a little bit here to see which way she wants to go. All right, and we are off. I don't see any traffic coming in, and clearly there's no traffic going out since I have uh, everything set to zero as far as AI traffic goes. So yeah, it's good. One thing I should point out, I do not have uh, photogrammetry turned on. Photogrammetry is notorious for messing with me when I'm trying to record these kinds of videos, so I typically keep that off. But since I do have World Update 16 installed, any new models that are included with that are going to show up. Alright, so we do have uh, rotor trim, so I have trimmed us forward just a touch, and I'm actually going to bring our collective up to about 90% and hold it there. Everything is still in the green, and you can see we're already at about 70 knots, or close to it. It's not going to get much faster than that. But yeah, look at that. We got some ships out there. That's awesome. There's some resorts on the other side. There's a fire station there for Donald Sangster International. Let's follow the coast and check out that uh, cruise ship. And we should also check out this airport, too might be a good idea, right? 
of course I don't have any airliners uh, spawned in or anything like that usually what I used to do when I flew like FSX and P3D and whatnot is I would actually uh, modify the scenery file and just put static aircraft like Air Jamaica's or uh, what's the newer one Caribbean Airways is that what it's called or something like that or put a couple of British Airways there and so on but I haven't really delved into the SDK for Microsoft Flight Simulator that's a software development kit so we're gonna bypass all of that stuff right now so it's just it's just gonna look like an abandoned airport at least in my sim. Your sim might be different. Maybe you have a whole bunch of different stuff going on there. And that's okay. Alright, but I really should try and see if I can get some kind of um, external video here. So we're going to try and see if we can trim this puppy out a little. I don't know how well this is going to work. I hate trying to get uh, external shots while I am um, flying like this in a helicopter that doesn't have autopilot, but we'll see what happens. Okay, one of those is bound to be the money shot, and I feel okay with that. Usually when I come up with my video thumbnails, you'll notice that it's actually a part of the video that I am recording. So, usually I'll just freeze the video and pick which one I want to be my thumbnail, pick which frame I'm going to use. I'm kind of curious to know, though, does that cruise ship actually have a helipad on it? Like, can we land on it? That I don't know. I'm going to bring the collective down a little bit here. I don't want to get too high, especially uh, since we do have clouds around 2,000 feet. And what are we at right now? About 1,000 and change. Yeah, I'm not seeing any helipads on there, which is unusual for a cruise ship of that size. Usually they've got at least one helipad on there somewhere. No, they've got tennis courts. At least I assume they're tennis courts. They might be basketball courts too. Although I don't have any of the uh, ship traffic mods that are very popular, I think Miltech makes a couple, and of course there's the Vessels series that you can get off of Orbex that will do all kinds of different ships. But I don't know that they have one just yet for Jamaica or for the Caribbean in general, so unfortunately we don't have that as an option right now. But as you can see, Montego Bay looks pretty good. I'm trying to remember when the last time was that I actually saw this city in person. I want to say it might have been 1984 or 1987. One of those two years. Either way, a very, very, very long time ago. I imagine this is closer to what it looks like in 2024. But again, since I don't have photogrammetry on, it might not be accurate. So if you're from Mobay and you're looking for your house right down there, you're probably not going to find it in exactly the way that you're used to seeing. All right, but I did see a football pitch around here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Actually looks like an industrial complex with a football pitch. It's probably just a stadium. I have no idea what that is. Um, if I remember, I will try and look it up on Google and it'll pop up in the bottom right now. But other than that, um, we can just assume it's a stadium. In the interim, let me uh, work on my trim here because I am feeling like I'm going forward a bit too much here. So we want to pull it back some. 
We're not going to get much more speed out of this. You can see where we are. We're just shy of 75 knots. It's really not going to get much more than that. But I do want to see if we can bring her down into this stadium somehow. I mean, there's plenty of real estate there. We should be able to land, right? And then I'm going to take you to Rose Hall. All right, let's, uh, let's put on the Bell Geo landing cam while we're at it here. Alright, I feel like uh, when I reset our rotor trim here, we also uh, killed all our forward speed. So I'm checking my gauges here. Yeah, we're just over 20 or so knots, so we're doing pretty good. Let's bring her in. I'm just going to plop her down right in the center there. So right now I have no pedal inputs going. Remember the helicopter naturally wants to torque a little bit to the right there. But as we start coming in to keep myself straight, I am going to give her a little bit of left input here. And you know what? Let's do this from the Belgio landing cam. Because why not? It's YouTube. We're cinematic and all that. Folks, is how it's done. That is why I have the Bell Geo landing cam. Is it starting to make sense now? <laughs> All right, but we still need to head to Rose Hall, so this is where our nifty little map is going to come in. And what I typically like to do, at least on the GPS, is I'll open up the menu and I'll scroll down to uh, data fields. I'll go ahead and turn that on. So that tells me that we are about 6.8 nautical miles away from our first destination, which should actually be the Montego Bay Convention Center, which is close to Rose Hall. They're in the same neighborhood. All right, so collective's coming up. I'm gonna get collective up to about 90%. Push through, get that defective translational lift, which is gonna transition us from hover flight to forward flight. Get that airspeed, pull back a little on the cyclic here, and gain some altitude. Awesomeness. Absolute awesomeness. And now we can start trimming the rotor forward. Just baby touches on the trim, by the way. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of trim for this thing to get out of whack, as it were. So you want to make sure that you're only using your um, rotor longitudinal trim like a touch at a time. Just a touch. But yeah, look at that. That is so cool. Might not look exactly like it does in real life, but, you know, I'm really liking that they've added, quote unquote, more life to Montego Bay. I say that, but you can't really see any moving cars or anything like that. I don't know if that's a VR thing or if maybe my settings are just too low for it to generate cars, but I never see any actual moving auto traffic in here. I'm kind of okay with it though, because let's face it, uh, any kind of traffic, whether it be moving auto, moving sea, moving air traffic, it's all going to affect your FPS. It does affect your CPU cycles, so keep that in mind. If you have a lot of that stuff going on, that might be why you're losing a little bit of FPS. The computer's trying to keep up with tracking where all that stuff is. 
it's one thing if a scenery designer actually puts like a uh, set routes for everything where it's on a quote unquote animation track that works simply because of the fact that you know it's always going to do that whereas something like this where it's just generating traffic that is somewhat dynamic it's a whole different ball game when the sim has to try and keep up with all of that stuff i'm not sure if i'm explaining that correctly but the general gist is there i'm sure you probably get the idea all right but next stop rose hall we're going to stay to the southern side of sangster international here in fact we're going to check out the terminal real quick there's the parking lot i say they probably got the parking lot accurate terminal itself and the terminal extension which was built a long time ago actually always one of my favorite airports it's such a cool airport it really is so we got a weather station there so we can track incoming hurricanes and all that good jazz not that hurricanes are considered good by any stretch of the imagination but you get my point and since it's going to take us a little while to actually get to Rose Hall area, we're going to go to the outside view. Oh look, there's a rainbow. Okay, let's see how close we are. We are about a third of the way there. So it says about three miles to go. Eh, maybe it's about halfway then. But if you look straight ahead, you'll see something light blue. I want to say that's our destination. That at least is the Montego Bay Convention Center. Rose Hall is just up the hill. Now Rose Hall is significant because it's got a ghost story attached to it. So it's a plantation basically it was an old plantation I want to say a sugar plantation and rumor has it that it was haunted by the white witch of Rose Hall now I forget her actual name um, I can always look it up and it'll pop up down below right about now but yeah supposedly uh, she haunts the place now, at least that's what I've heard. I've never really looked much deeper into it, but I remember hearing the story as a kid and it would freak me out. And I'm like, you know, it's otherwise such a really beautiful place, beautiful mansion, plantation, whatever you want to call it. There's no way in heck that I would want to sleep the night there. At least not as a kid anyway. As an adult, it's a whole different story. I'm like, come on, ghost, come on. But that's just me. You know, I grew up to be a weirdo, what can I say? Although, technically speaking, I was a weird kid to begin with, so there is that. But yeah, the White Witch of Rose Hall. Juliet, leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Okay, thank you. Frequency change approved. Sangster Tower Bell 47 Juliet frequency change. We'll talk to them again in a second, because we're going to need to come back. All right, so the blue roof building there, that is the convention center. So I'm going to bring our collective down and we're going to fly low and slow around it. Or at least as uh, low and slow as this thing can get. So 75 knots right now. And I'm going to get the trim reset. So that's going to bump the nose up. Lower the collective while you do that to compensate. 
And that will, of course, kill a lot of your forward speed, but that's fine. We kind of want that. We also want to descend fairly rapidly. You can see our current altitude right now is about 400 or under 400 feet. And let's see how they did with this convention center. This actually looks good. This looks really good. So I want to say they may have gotten, uh, who was it, Gaia simulations to do a lot of these modeling projects here for the world updates, or at least for this particular part of the world that they have updated. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Aside from the fact that we're missing fence right there, it doesn't look very secure. But other than that, yeah, this is awesome. I like this. I really like this. Let's see if we can, uh, I don't know, pirouette around. Well, I guess technically it's not a pirouette, really, but you know what I'm trying to do here. Shenanigans. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to show you in a second here. But yeah, look at the buildings. Isn't that nice? There we go. This is what I want to do. So we're just going to do this. This is a good exercise when uh, flying because... So much can go wrong. You see, we got a little bit of uh, ground effect off that roof there. And it's going to drop us back down because we're not over the roof anymore. But look at the design of that. Look how it's missing paint in places and stuff like that. That is the kind of stuff that I love to see. Thank you so much, Gaia and Asobo, for this. This is awesome. I can't wait to see the other POIs here in Jamaica. And like I said, that's probably going to be like the next few videos. We'll go ahead and do that. But look at the main building here. Let's see how close we can get. Hopefully we won't crash into it. It's me. It's shenanigans. You know it's got to happen. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm going to come down here. I want to say we're centered, but... Uh, We'll find out in a moment. That is too neat. I love stuff like this. I really do. Of course, I've made it no secret on this channel over the years that I am a huge fan of architecture. Uh, when I was in college, that was actually my first major. I did end up switching majors to art, but architecture I spent a couple of years studying. And even though... In my opinion, I couldn't hack it as an architect. I've always maintained a deep love for architecture. So when I see stuff like this being replicated in the flight sim, it really tickles me pink. All right, but there we go. That is a convention center, and we now need to find Rose Hall, which should be up the hill here. Easily identifiable because it's one of the oldest looking buildings here and there's also fountains on the property and so on and so forth. Matter of fact, here it is. Alright, let's do this all dramatic like here. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the famous, or I guess in some cases, infamous, Rose Hall. One of Jamaica's national landmarks, and it is faithfully reproduced. It looks absolutely amazing. So I wonder if they put the White Witch in here somewhere. That's the real question. Are we going to look in one of these windows and see some chick looking out? I feel like I should go around the building, except there's an awful lot of trees, so maybe that's not such a good idea, huh? But yeah, 
look at that. Look at the stone walls and everything. And what I love about it, um, it almost looks like everything has parallax. And parallax is kind of like an optical illusion that gives things depth. So like if you look at the stone wall, instead of it just being like a flat texture, it looks like it's actually got 3D depth to each and every stone in the wall, which is really cool. And I don't know if that is actually the case or if it's just a matter of me having been playing Star or not Star Wars, but uh, Skyrim VR an awful lot and messing around with parallax in there that now I see parallax in everything. But needless to say, it just looks incredible. So while we're here, how about we set down? Uh, let me just check to make sure that uh, everything is clear. Okay, yeah, we got a nice clear spot here. So let's, uh, let's turn around here. We're going to set down. We'll go outside to the drone cam and we'll take a quick look at Rose Hall before we head back to Sangster International. Look at the flowers there. Now, I can't tell if those are supposed to be hibiscuses or if they are... Um, the other one. Not Bougainvillea. It's on the tip of my tongue, too. If somebody knows in the comments, uh, go ahead and chime in. Actually, if my daughter watches it, she'll probably know and she'll chime in. She's the guru of all things plants and flowers. <laughs> all right, but hey, we're here at Rose Hall, so let's go out into the drone cam and we'll check out property really quick before we head back to the airport and call the video done. In fact, Let's do it even more immersively. We'll open the dang door. And this, folks, right here is what I absolutely love about VR. You really get an idea of the scale of the world around you. I have no doubt that this door is this tall. Let me rotate myself around here. So now we can see the flowers, we can see the fountain behind there, you can see the uh, convention center, and hey look, there's our helicopter with the landing light actually working this time. Wow. So what was going on with it before? You know what? I don't even want to know. We're just going to chalk it up to the record button is on, and anytime the record button is on is when things just go pear-shaped. <laughs> If you're a YouTuber, you're very familiar with this process. All right, but let's go ahead and get out of here. Beautiful Rose Hall. Keep forgetting I gotta push myself down here. I don't automatically come down like I would in Skyrim VR. I know there are avatar um, mods that you can get for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I don't have any of them, and I will let you in on a little secret that I learned way back before this sim even came out. When we had gone to Seattle the one time, they actually did have an avatar mode where you could walk around at person height, stuck to the ground, in the sim. Similar to how prepared used to do it and I don't know if they still do because honestly I don't use prepared anymore but yeah that used to be a thing they took it out I don't know why I can only assume they thought that people wouldn't be interested in it but a solo if you're watching this maybe it's time to put avatar mode back in especially for us VR users and I'm sure everybody would benefit from it really but yeah the ability to walk around in the sim would be really cool whenever we have showcases of uh, scenery such as this. It's a great way to get up close and personal 
with the World Update editions. All right, so we're back. We'll hop in the helicopter. There we go. And I noticed that the, uh, the light shows as off when you get close to the helicopter, so I don't know if that's something any builds needs to look at or what. But let's check our gas. So we're down to about ooh, 22 gallons of fuel. I think we're good. We should have enough to make it to the airport. Speaking of which, uh, before we take off, let me go ahead and contact them. Oh, wait. We're still within the airspace. All right. Well, I won't worry about it then. We'll just get close and land. Because we're about done here. This is all I had for show and tell. At least for this video. Like I said, in our next video, we'll hop over to another portion of Jamaica. We might show off another uh, Cowan Sim update for one of the helicopters. I believe he just recently updated the um, 125, the H125, the Squirrel. The Squirrel, as I like to call it. So we may show that off, or we may show something else, depending on, you know, if anything releases anytime in the very near future. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm always in touch with a lot of these developers anyway, so they know that if something comes out or if there's something that they would like me to showcase, I am more than happy to do it. Um, typically, if it is a product that I really like, I'm going to buy it anyway, and I'm going to keep it updated. I'll just take the initiative to show you. I don't necessarily need to have the developer say to me, hey, by the way, Bell, can you showcase my changes? I'll just do it. Why? Because I believe in the product, and that's good enough for me. All right, but we're going to head back to the airport, and I believe this is our approach vector anyway, so we should be good to go. I'm going to check the um, ATC thing again. Oh, I hate when it does that. All right, nearest airport list. It freezes every now and then. Sangster, uh, request full stop. Sangster Tower Bell 47 Juliet is five miles east, 400 feet, with kilo to land. Bell 47 Juliet, Sangster Tower. Altimeter 2 niner decimal niner 2 wind 263 at tree. Make straight in runway 25. Okay, straight in runway 25. We'll do. Bell 47 Juliet, wind 263 at tree. Clear to land runway 25. Alright, that sounds good too. Clear to land runway 25, Bell 47 Julia. Okay, so as we're making our way back to the airport, we'll go back to the outside view. Uh, we'll choose the view from the top this time. Okay, looking good. There is our runway. Uh, what are we doing for speed? We're over about 60 knots. And our altitude, we're just under 1,000. We're at about uh, 820. So yeah, we're just going to line up here as if we're coming in, you know, like an airliner or something. We'll pass over, I believe this is Sandals Resort, if I'm not too mistaken. I could be wrong, but it does kind of look like Sandals. So yeah, there we go one of the more famous hotels in the area. If it isn't, I'll probably have it pop up right now, but um, I can't always guarantee that I will remember to check this stuff online on Google or whatever. But either way, let's go ahead and bring her in. And I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed this little flight with me here. As we're coming in to land, I should also announce, you may have noticed on the last few videos, I've really been hyping the heck out of Flight Sim Expo. 
Well, we have some bad news and we've got some pending news. So the bad news is, of course, unbeknownst to us, well, most of us already knew that it was coming, but it was a surprise to the event organizers for whatever reason. The Tropicana Hotel is about to be demolished. So it'll be demolished in April. Of course, the convention is supposed to take place in June. Obviously, that creates a problem. Now, as of the time of this recording, uh, which is February the 9th, 2024, the organizers for Flight Sim Expo are working feverishly to find a replacement venue, and they do have the help of the Tropicana, as well as the Las Vegas Convention Bureau, to try and see what they can pull off. We have not heard anything concrete yet as to where it will be, but as soon as we know, I will most definitely let you know in one of these videos here. So if you have not yet uh, registered for the convention, hold off for right now. I will still have my referral link below for those of you who still want to sign up, but until we know for sure exactly where it's going to happen, I can't really recommend that you register right now, but keep it in the back of your mind because I would really love for Flight Sim Expo to happen. It's been a few years since I've been there. I kind of miss meeting you all. So I would love to do that. I'm just going to touch the ground here. No 47 Juliet exit runway when able. Okay, that's what I was waiting for. And now we'll do our hover taxi. Actually, we'll probably end up taking off again. So we'll try to keep it low. But yeah, that's what's going on with... Um, with Flight Sim Expo currently, and I'm hoping that they are able to get a resolution and the show will be on again. But in the interim, hold on, let me just get off the runway here. I'm a helicopter, I can do what I want, right? In the interim, kind of hold off for right now. When I hear more, I will definitely make sure that you hear as well. And everybody keep your fingers crossed that the event will go off without a hitch because I need a vacation. It's been a few years. I need a vacation. I've been stuck at home and I don't really consider myself stuck because I'm a hermit these days. So being at home is great for me. But yeah, sometimes you just need to get out. Sometimes you just need to get out. And if I'm gonna get out, then I may as well go to Vegas, right? That's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's now the second time I've said that today. But yeah, I kind of wanted to show off the uh, front end of the airport here. So this is what you would see if you were driving into Sangster to take a flight to go elsewhere. Definitely did not look like that when I was a kid. But man, has this airport come a long way. Look at that, I love Montego Bay right there. That is just awesome. Again, thank you, Gaia Simulations and Asobo Microsoft for this, for the love that you've added to the entire Caribbean and especially Jamaica. This is the kind of stuff that makes me a lifelong customer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's go buzz the tower, Goose, and then we'll find our helipad and land. Jose, the VR pilot, saw me doing that, he'd be very cross with me. <laughs> Hi, Jose. <laughs> All right, we're going to bring her down right over here, and I'm noticing an abundance of these little CB-looking things. They're not actually CBs. I forget what they are. Um, but apparently the sim really loves generating them today because they're, like, all over the place, even in the airliner parking spots. But, eh, I don't worry about it. 
What matters is that we have a nice parking space right over here in the GA section of the airport. So we're going to pull up right here. We're in ground effect right now. Oh, okay. Definitely don't want to come down right now. We're going to push forward to in between these little cones. And we're going to call it done. There you go, a nice refreshing flight to the Montego Bay area, and like I said, no next time around. Okay, we'll do. We'll do. One two one decimal seven bell four seven Juliet. All right, that ought to shut them up. Bye. Okay, so yes, next video uh, we'll pick another part of Jamaica that happens to have POIs, and we will check that out as well. We may use this helicopter, we may use a different helicopter, we'll wait and see what happens. But in the interim, uh, I thank you, as always, for watching. This has been Bell Geode. I've been playing in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We've been flying around Jamaica in World Update 16. Awesome, awesome stuff. Thank you so much for this. I've been clamoring for months now, even years, to say that the Caribbean needs some love, and I'm really, really glad to see what you have done. Not just Jamaica, the entire Caribbean. Awesome stuff. Thank you. So, if you enjoy what you've seen, please feel free to give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. The aircraft we've been showcasing also technically comes with this update, but it is a payware purchase. This is the Local Legends Bell 47J, as featured in James Bond Thunderball, as well as other movies. It is by any bills, and it can be found in the Sim, in the InSim Marketplace. So be sure to pick this up if you want a good touring helicopter around the area. And definitely wear your floats, just in case you need to land on the water. But other than that, I would say we are pretty much done. So thank you again for watching. And as I bring the collective down, or bring the uh, RPM down, I should say. Turn off the governor before we do that. I'm going to bid you all adieu. I hope you all have an excellent day. And thanks as always for watching. Ciao.